Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, well, I know you, you thought, oh, my God, we're going to watch a movie. No. <laughs> but let me first just say thank you. Thank you, guys. You always um, make us feel special. Amen. And you always um, acknowledge. And, you know, um, that means a lot. Um, I don't ask for it, but it, it means a lot when you, when you do that. And so I appreciate it. Appreciate all the kind words and children's church. And I said, I think I got a couple words out of the song. <laughs> I think it said something about love, right? <laughs> but uh, we appreciate it. Amen. Praise the Lord. But uh, our series this month is um, you're going to want to quit, right? You're going to want to quit. Where is that? All right. You're going to want to quit. And the reason I showed that is because in 1947, uh, Chuck Yeager, um, against all odds and against everyone saying it's impossible, broke the sound barrier. Amen? Amen. Amen. He didn't quit, even though people said it can never happen. People said, nah, it's not going to be. But yet, he did it. Amen? Amen. In um, 1954, the very first four-minute mile, which they said was impossible, which was impo but Roger Bannister said, no, I can do it. I can do I'm not going to quit. No matter how uh, I feel, I'm not going to quit. And if you ever watched the little clips about it, right when it's coming into that last stretch, um, he says, I just feel this burst of energy, this power that just floods my body and I can just go. And, and, and they said, no, it's impossible. But he said, no, I can. So I'm telling you, you might want to quit, but keep going. Amen. Because you can make it. You can break the sound barrier. You can run the miles. You can do it. We can do it as Christians. Amen. Um, uh, the Wright brothers in 1903 did, built their first plane. And even after all the failures, even after crashing a few times, even after thinking, I'm never, I'm never going to make it, amen, today we can fly from LAX into Manila in just a matter of hours because they didn't give up, because, because they didn't quit, amen, they didn't quit, and um, we need to have that attitude of not quitting, amen, Sylvester Stallone in what was it, uh, 1976, took him three days to write the script Rocky. And no one wanted to touch it. And he went from place to place saying, somebody's got to grab this, somebody's got to do it. And, and, and one person did, and they said, but we don't want you in it because you don't have the looks. <laughs> You just don't have the looks to do it. And he, and he said, no, I'm going to be the star role in this, and either you're going to do it my way or you're not going to do it. And he went from place after place till someone finally said, okay. And what happened? A blockbuster. It, it, they, it only took a million dollars to make that movie, and they made over $117 million, And it won the Best Picture Academy Award. You know Why? Because he didn't quit. Because he didn't take no for an answer. He said, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do this. Amen? Amen? Amen. And that's how God wants us to be. I know these are all kind of just like, but they're people. <laughs> Amen? They're just ordinary people that refused, refused to say no. Amen? In 1975... I believe it was uh, a mother, a mother desperate, a mother wanting 
a change for her son, a mother who spoke very little English, picked up the phone and called Teen Challenge of Bakersfield and said, please, somebody go see my son, please. Pastor Fernie Mancius walked into the Kern County Jail, asked to see inmate Juan Antonio Juarez. And he came out with his headband or whatever. <laughs> and they gave him an option. You either face your 10-year sentence or you go into Teen Challenge. Well, <laughs> a year. <laughs> So he took that, and um, I remember hearing the stories of when he first walked in that he sat in the very back row, in the very back, back, as far as you could get, just with that hard look on their face and just that, you're not going to tell me how to live my life, but God says different. God says, I can break the barrier. I can break the hardness of your heart. And I can change a life. God can do that. And little by little, he changed Pastor Juan Juarez. Amen. And never again was he satisfied with the back row. All right. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Amen. It always had to be the front row. Every time we went to the West Coast Believers Convention, standing in line at 5 a.m. just to get the front row. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And um, I know tomorrow is the day that he went home, what, 11 years ago. Amen. Amen. He beat us home. But yeah. it's okay because one day, right. one day we'll see him, right? Amen. Along with a lot of other people that have gone home to be with the Lord. Some of you, your family members, your mother, your father, my mother, different people. But the hope and the goodness that we have is that we will see them once again. Amen? Amen. 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 So my whole thing in saying all of that is don't ever give up. Right. Amen. Amen? Don't ever give up because we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens Amen. us. Amen? Amen? David was just a little shepherd boy when he went out to that hillside where the Philistines were taunting and making fun of, and Goliath was that big giant. And he went out just to take his brother's lunch, right? right. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is making fun of our God? <laughs> How come no one is going out there to take him? How come no one's going out there to knock him down and say, you know what? Our God is bigger. How come? Amen. 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 How come you're not coming against everything and every obstacle that might be coming your way, that might be trying to hinder you, and just like David, saying no this day? Yeah. And that's what he did. He said, you know what? What's in it if I go out and knock this guy out or take this guy out? I know I'm paraphrasing, but you could read the story in Samuel. Amen? Amen. 
They said, well, guy, you get the king's daughter, wasn't it, or something like that, and, and she's beautiful, and you get all this other stuff, and he said, well, let me add it then. <laughs> I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of this great big giant obstacle that thinks he's big, bad, and ugly, but I serve a God that's a lot bigger, that's a lot more stronger than this guy. Amen. And he said, this day you're going down. This day you're not going to taunt the armies of the living God anymore. And sometimes that's what we have to do in our own life. This day, this day, devil, you're not going to. You're not going to. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we have to do that. We have to do that in our lives. Amen. And, and you know, um, just before I go on and before, I just, I truly want to say thank you. And, you know, um, I want to say thank you to our board, which is Mr. Louis Badia, Mr. Les Lucas, Miss Gigi Lucas, Michelle Kirshner, Pastor Eric, Dr. Jerry Savell. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being loyal. Amen. That's a, that's a characteristic that um, just doesn't come naturally. That is built into your life over the long years of just serving. Amen. Of being faithful, loyalty. I just thank God. I, I was thinking about that yesterday and, and, and this morning of just how loyal people are. And all of those that have been here since day one, some of you guys, I, JR and, and Lydia, that just the first service, man, they were just there. And I just thank God for all of you. Some of you have been here for years. Frank and uh, Ryan was born here and Marty. And um, I just thank God. And they grew up here and now they're taking charge and leadership and amen. I'm just thankful for that because they stood and they didn't quit when they could have, they didn't quit. And a lot of you, I know there's a lot of you. I didn't even mention Sylvia Minos been here for years. Amen. You remember when that back part of the building was our sanctuary uh, yeah, for years, and I'm just grateful for that. I'm thankful because they, they didn't quit. Amen? They didn't quit, and I'm so thankful for that. So, you know, um, I just want to share. I shared this uh, at our discipleship class on Thursday. Just uh, three points is what I'm just going to give you um, just to help you because you're going to need this if we're going to continue in our growth with the Lord. Amen. You're going to need to have these three things in your life if you're going to finish out your race. Amen. Roger Bannister just built up that endurance and that that uh, that that stamina to make that. I mean, come on. That's that's a that's a lot to be able to run a mile in under 5 minutes, wasn't it? for something or something like that, right? Just, oh my gosh, you have to really be in shape, of, of course, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, you'd, have to build, you, you'd have to build some endurance in your life, amen? And we as Christians, we need to build some things in our life if we're going to make it. And, and yeah, we might get to some places in our life where you're going to want to quit, but we're not going to. Amen. We're going to keep going. And so I just want to share uh, three things with you that I believe, uh, and, and I shared about Peter, and I believe that they helped Peter become the man that he was when he was following Jesus and after Jesus died and rose again and went to heaven. Peter became just a strong instrument used by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But we all know the story of Peter, and we know how Peter uh, began his journey with the Lord. We know that that Peter was just an ordinary man, a, a fisherman, that, that one day Jesus said, if you want to follow me, we, we can change the world. And so Peter dropped all of his, his uh, fishing equipment and got rid of his boat, sold his boat, did everything he could, and stepped out and started following Jesus. But we all know that he had... Uh, mishaps in his life or, or he he did some things that you know 
that kind of led him off stray or however you want to say it. Um, we, we know that Peter was, uh, had an issue with anger. We know that, that he, he mistrusted sometimes. I know that he was the one that stepped out of the boat but never walked on the water. So we know that Peter had some issues in his life that he needed to get together as well because we know the very end of the life of Jesus, that Peter stood in, in the midst of the crowd as they were arresting Jesus, as they were taking Jesus back to prepare him to get crucified. We know that they approached Peter and they asked him, Peter, aren't, weren't you one of the ones that were with Jesus? And right then and there, Peter, Peter could have said, yes, I was. <laughs> right? But we all know that that's not what he did. We all know that beforehand Jesus said, Peter, because Peter said, man, I'll be with you to the end. Remember? Remember the story about Peter and Peter said, man, I'll stand behind you, Jesus. Just like sometimes we say, I'll be behind you pastor and one pastor said well how far behind and <laughs> I didn't say that another but Dr. Savelle actually <laughs> but um Peter you know was all gung-ho and yeah Jesus I'll stand with you I don't care what they do and you know and and Jesus said Peter after three how does he say it three uh, somebody say it out loud Three times after the cock crows three times, Peter, you're, you're going to deny me. <laughs> Peter, no, 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 I won't, Jesus. And that's just how some of us are too. Oh, I'm going to follow you, Jesus. Get me out of this mess. And I promise you, I promise you, I'll never do that again. I'll never go out again. I'll never, uh, come on. And yeah. you know, we all, uh, we all do that. Sorry, Jesus, I'm so sorry. I confess my sins to you. And then Saturday night comes and we're right back out there. Right? That's the same like Peter, right? Come on, Peter. Amen. And Peter said, man, no, I'll be with you, Jesus. And we all know at the very moment, Peter said, no, I don't know him. <laughs> yeah, you were with him. No, no. I don't know him. I was never with him. I don't know. We all know he was lying right then and there, right? <laughs> but something happened. And that's what I want to get to is just the three points that can help you. Because I believe that they help Peter become the disciple. Um, even though Jesus already instilled that word in him. He was with them when he seen miracles take place and, and everything. But yet, there was just something that was that was missing. And maybe there's one of these that are missing out of your life. Amen. And you need to have these in your life. And so we're going to read out of um, Acts chapter one. And I promise I'm not going to keep you long. But we are going to read, right? Yeah. Amen. Acts chapter 1, okay, this is after the crucifixion. This is after Jesus uh, was resurrected and he was with the disciples. And this is what it says. In Acts chapter 1, verse 4, Jesus instructed them. He in instructed his disciples, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait here until you receive the gift I told you about, the gift the Father has promised. For John baptized you with water, but in a few days from now, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And, and I want you to know that Jesus left this instruction to them. And, and the good thing about this is that they followed these instructions. And I want you to know how important it is to hear the word of God. But don't just hear the word of God. Follow the instructions of the word of God. Because this is your road map. This is your guide. This is what's going to lead you to the very power, to the very miracle that you will need to make your life successful. If you at, come to an area that you want to quit, what are you going to need? You're going to need the power of God to go through. And that's my very first point is, is my, my little saying under you're going to want to quit is, is you're going to need. This is what you're going to need. And you're going to need power. Amen. So Jesus left these instructions. Don't leave. Don't leave Jerusalem until you receive this. Amen. And so what are they, what are they waiting for? So Acts chapter two says this. Are you ready? 
Verse 1, on the day of Pentecost, amen, all the disciples were gathered in one place. This is where Jesus told them to wait. Suddenly, a sound from the violent blast of wind rushing into the house out of the heavenly realm. The roar of the wind was so overpowering, it was all anyone could bear. Then, all at once, a pillar of fire appeared before their eyes. It separated into tongues of fire that engulfed each one of them. They were all filled, I love this, out of the passion. They were all filled and equipped. Amen. 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 With the Holy Spirit. Amen. And power. Amen. And that word in another translation, it says they were filled with power. That word power is in, in the translation is dudamus, which is dynamite. Now, I don't know if you know anything about dynamite, but dynamite is explosive, right? Amen. So if, if we're endued and equipped with this power that's explosive, then how are we supposed to be? Dynamic. Thank you. Explosive with the very things that God has given to us. He's given us this word. He's given us this power, this power to, to be able to go out and do what God's called us to do. Amen. Amen. God, you guys aren't very excited about what God has for you. Maybe you don't have this power yet. Maybe you just maybe your power is lying dormant. I don't know. But you're going to need some power in your life if you're going to make it through without quitting. Amen. You're not going to make it on your own. I can tell you that right now. You'll never make it with just a little dab here and a little dab there. Amen? Just a, just a little dab won't do. Does anybody remember that commercial? Come on. You, you're low, you, you, yeah. If you remember that commercial, just a little dab will do you. Some of you don't remember and have no idea what we're talking about. But some of us that are a little on the older side, we know what it means, right? <laughs> but you got to. You got to. You got to. This is the deutimous power of God. Amen. That flooded and filled and equipped. And it said they began to speak in tongues, empowered by the Spirit, to speak in a language they've never heard. And of course, if you go on to, to read that, that chapter, we're not going to read it all just because we, we just have a, a little bit of time. But, but on verse 14, now look, this is the same Peter. This is what I just love about this, that this is the same Peter that denied. This is the same Peter that had trouble. This is the same Peter that had flaws because we have those same things. We have issues. We have flaws. We have different things in our life. But I want you to know that Peter got a hold of what Jesus told him. And those last instructions that, that Jesus gave, Peter said, okay, man, I got to make some changes. And if Jesus is leaving me some last instructions, then I'm going to make some changes in my life. If you're not willing to make any changes, then I don't know how you're going to make it in these last days that we're living. If you're not willing to grab hold of what God is saying, if you're not willing to say, God, change me, fill me, equip me, do whatever uh, needs to be done to change my life, to fill my life, God, whatever it is. Amen. 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 And Peter said, man, Jesus has something for us. I've seen too many things. I've been too close to him. I, I've, I've seen miracles. I know. And even though I made a mistake and I was sorry for it, I'm telling you, God has something for us. And that day, Peter's life changed. Because look at Peter, the same Peter. It says that the Peter, Peter stood up with the 11 apostles and shouted to the crowd, Come on, his very first sermon, he took charge. He, he had just that authority spirit. He had the power that flooded his life. And he said, look it, listen, my fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem, you ne need to clearly understand what's happening. These people are not drunk because that's what they thought. It's only nine o'clock, but this is what was prophesied by, by the prophet Joel. And God says that I'm going to pour out my spirit on the 
last days. Come on. I just believe that God is going to pour out his spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Holy Spirit will come on uh, servants and men and women alike and all these great and wonderful things. And look, at if you can read it, but just for, for time's sake, and Peter continued and people of Israel listened. Come on, church. They listened to the facts and that Jesus, the victorious, was a man on a divine mission whose authority was clearly proven. This is, this is all Peter's sermon. Amen? Hallelujah. And he goes on to tell them all these things. And then in the very end, um, I, just, I just think it, it's great. And the crowd, listen, the crowd responds in verse 37 to Peter's words. And when they heard this, they were crushed and realized what they had done to Jesus. Deeply moved, they said to Peter and the other apostles, what do we need to do? You need to ask yourself, what do I need to do, God? What do I need to do to change? Come on. What do I need to do? Because these people caught hold of what was going on. These people got hold of the very thing that Jesus told them that was coming. They got hold of it. They said, man, we messed up. We crucified this Jesus. We should have never done that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We should have never listen to all the lies and, and everything that people were saying. We should have caught hold. I'm telling you, you need to catch hold of who this Jesus is in your life. He is a Lord. He is a Savior. He is a God. He's a deliverer. He's a healer. He's a victorious king. And he has some something to give into your life. Amen. Amen. They realized and they were moved and they said, what do we need to do? And Peter says, repent and return to God. Amen. Amen. Maybe some of you need to repent and return to God. I don't know. Amen. Only you know. But ask yourself that question. God, what do I need to do? What do I need to change? Because all of us. All of us need to change something in our life. Amen. Amen. And they just all caught hold of it. And the Bible says in that very last that they were continually filled with the praises of God, enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord kept adding to their number daily those who were coming to life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just believe that, church. If we want to have a move of God in these last days, then we've got to have the power of God to do that. Amen. If you're not going to quit and you don't want to quit and you're, you, you, you're at that verge of quitting, I'm telling you, just know that the power of God is here to help you and to see you through. Amen. Just know that, that God's power, it's his power, not mine. And if you continue to read the book of Acts, all through the book, of Acts. That's what the disciples said. Amen. It's not me. It's God. It's God's power. And let me just read a few scriptures before the next point really quick. Amen. In Ephesians 6.10, it says, finally, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Come on. And in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Luke 10.19, behold, I have given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurts you. Amen. If you don't take the authority, if you don't take the power of God, I'm telling you right now, the enemy will. Amen. He'll take over and take charge. But God said, no, I've given you power. I've given you authority. Use my name. Amen. Use my power. It's not you. It's Christ in you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And that's Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than we could ever ask or think according to the power at work in us. I'm telling you that there's power that you can rely on, not your own, but his. 
his power. You're not going to make it on your own. You're not going to do it on your own. It's his power. If you remember that story uh, in Acts 19 about the seven sons of Sceva, amen. You remember that? This is the apostle Paul who was filled with, with power and the authority of Jesus. And they were going throughout all of the regions of uh, everywhere that they went. They were praying for people and miracles were taking place and hands were being laid on and he Healings were coming and uh, people were just getting saved and delivered everywhere. And, and, and the seven sons of Sceva said, hmm, this looks interesting. Maybe we could do it too. But these guys were just ordinary men thinking that they could just say something. And they would had no idea about the power of God residing, amen, on the inside of someone. They just thought it was words and they could do that. But you know what? They went up to this demon-possessed man and they said, this is what they said. They said, we want you to come out. Yeah, I know I'm paraphrasing. In, in the name that that Paul guy preaches, the, thing is, the name Jesus, you know that name. And those, that devil rose up and he said, Ah, we know Jesus because we dealt with Jesus and we don't want to mess with that guy. And we know Paul because we've been around Paul. Amen. But I have no idea who you are. Come on. Because that's, they're doing it on their own. So if you think you're going to live life on your own, in your own power, the a devil's going to tell you right now, well, I know Jesus and I know, I know Paul and I know someone, I know all these other, but I don't know you. So therefore I can take th authority over your life. I can come into your life and cause havoc because I don't think you know this Jesus. Or you might think you know Jesus, but you really don't. Because if you knew Jesus, there would be power and authority coming out of your mouth. Amen. 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 There's power. Amen. Hallelujah. I've got a lot of scriptures, but um, in Acts chapter 3, when, when they went up to the gate, beautiful Paul and uh, uh, Peter, I'm sorry, Peter and John, and they told that man to rise up. Amen. That was the power of God. Come on. Yeah. This is the same Peter and that denied Christ, but man, he waited for that power. And that power came into his life. Yeah. Amen. And if you go on to read that, he tells them, they tell them, it's not by us. But it's that power that's working in us. Amen. Amen. So my, my second point is courage. You're going to need courage. Come on. You are, I'm sorry, it's not courage. I'm sorry, Jake, that's my fault. My second point was boldness. Sorry, that's my fault. Amen. Boldness. Amen. Hallelujah. So with, with that great power is going to come boldness. We need boldness in our lives. Amen. Because you know what, church? Man, we got to start standing up. Amen. You know, you know what it's like out there. You know what the world is like. You know what, what's going on out there? And if we don't stand up for the truth of the gospel, come on. Right. We, we, we have to. We have to preach the word of God. We have to preach the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. The whole gospel, not just part, not just the ones that we want to hear, not just the thing that's going to just tickle our ears and, oh, you know, you can live however you want and we know you can go and we know that you can ask forgiveness. And I, I know that. I believe that. I believe there's grace. I believe there's mercy. But there comes a time in your life when you got to say, man, I need to stand up here. There comes a time in your life when, okay, enough is enough. Are you going to keep doing the same things for 40 years and say, oh, God, forgive me? No, that's not going to work. Amen. There has to be a, a, a time when you stand up and be bold and say, no, I'm not going to live that way anymore. I'm going to stand for the truth, and I'm going to speak the truth. And I pray that our church right now, here, from here on, we have been, but we preach the whole Bible, not just part of the Bible, but the whole Bible. Amen. And we believe the whole Bible, not just what we want to believe. We believe the whole Bible. Amen. Amen. And if we're not going to be bold enough to say what God's word says, then we're in trouble. Because I'm telling you right now, Jesus, Jesus did not care 
I mean, he called people snakes and vipers, and, and he just told them like it was. It's not even any more to, to lust to lust or uh, be with the woman. It's even what's in your heart and the thinking of it. Amen. If you're, it, it, and Jesus was just plain and told them like it was. Amen. 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 And that's how we have to be, church. Amen. Amen. If you don't know how to forgive, look at what Jesus said. When the apostles said, well, how many times? Seven? Oh, yeah, that's pretty easy. And Jesus said, no, seven times 70 a day. Amen. And people are like, oh, no, there's just no way. I can't do that. <laughs> Because we get like that. We just think, you know, but Jesus was plain. He spoke the truth. Man, if you lie, then you're a liar. <laughs> is, it, is that not true? That's what Jesus said. Read it. Read the Bible. You'll find out. The red letters, Jesus spoke truth. And he did not hesitate. And, and you know... We kind of hesitate, I say. I say we. Um, I don't know. It's just the human part of us, maybe. Oh, we don't want to offend anyone. We don't want to hurt anyone. Or, or as a pastor, you think, oh, if I do that, they're not going to even come to church. But Jesus didn't care. And not in a bad way, because he loved people. But he wanted the people to know the truth. Amen. In every area of our lives, church, Jesus spoke the truth in how to live. How do you live as a Christian? How do you live? How do you make it as a Christian? Well, you got to have power to make it in the world that we're in right now. And you got to have boldness to speak up. Amen to speak up and say, man, I'm standing for what I'm standing for. Yeah, I am a Christian. Amen. Yeah, I go to HD church. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yes, I believe. I believe what the word says. Amen. Amen. And man, when the, when the power of God came onto those apostles and those disciples in that upper room and everyone else that was in there, it changed their lives. Amen. And they became great uh, men and women of God and God using them in, in extraordinary ways. And they just began to be bold in everything that they did. And, and you can read it in through, throughout the book of Acts, the, the boldness that they had as ministers. Amen. And the third, uh, the third point is courage. Amen. And it's going to take courage to be bold. Amen. And the Webster's di uh, Dictionary, the definition of courage is mental and moral strength to venture, to preserve, and to withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. The courage. The courage that it took, Pastor Juan Juarez, amen, amen. to come out of that jail when in all reality those jailers or those guards told him you'll be back you'll never change amen you'll never change but thank god he did thank god he did and if anybody had boldness it was that man amen he didn't care where he was but he would talk about jesus to anyone any place Amen. He, he had no fear about talking about Jesus. Am I right? Amen. Am I right, guys? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I think that's, if you talk to D Dr. Savell, he said that's one, of, that's one of the very first things that he uh, loved about Pastor Juan was that he was just bold and that he shared the gospel no matter where he went. And he told people the truth. Amen. 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 So it takes courage to withstand in, in fear and in difficulties. So if you're facing difficulties and challenges in your life, yeah, it takes courage. It takes courage. If you've made mistakes in your life, it takes courage. 
It takes courage to get out of those and, and to stand where God says that you can stand. Amen. It takes courage to step out just like these disciples. And, you know, I just look at, um, I'm just going to read a couple more scriptures and then we'll, we'll close. But I love the book of Hebrews, um, Hebrews chapter 11, because I, I just think that these, the people that they talk about were, were just so bold and so courageous. And in, in Joshua chapter one, what did, what did, uh, God say, okay, Moses, my servant is gone now. And so it's up to you, Joshua. You're going to have to be bold and you're going to have to be courageous to take these people the rest of the way. Isn't that what he says in Josh, Joshua chapter one? If you read that, be, to be bold and be courageous to take this next step, Joshua. I know you might not be think you're ready, but I'm saying you're ready. Amen. You can lead these people to the promised land. And I just love the, the last portions of, of um, Hebrews uh, chapter um, 11. Um, and it says in verse 32 in, in the head title, it says, More Faith Champions. And it says, what more could I say to convince you? After everything that he talked about, Moses and Abraham and all of those, he said, for there's not enough time to tell you the faith or the courage or the boldness of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, of David, of Samuel, and all the prophets. Through faith's power. Ah, oh, through faith's power, they conquered kingdoms and established true justice. Their faith fastened onto their promise and pulled them into reality. Come on, church. If you're going to make it in these last days, if you're going to make it with the power of God, with the faith of God, with the boldness of God, with the courage of God, then faith has to, to pull you through. Amen. They fa their faith fastened onto the promise and pulled them into reality. It was faith that shut the mouths of lions. Come on. That took courage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, it put out the raging or, or power of the raging fire and caused many to escape certain death by the sword. Although weak, their faith imparted power to make them strong. Faith, listen, faith sparked courage with them and they became mighty warriors in battle, pulling armors, armies from another realm into the battle around, array. Faith-filled women saw their dead children raised in resurrection power, yet it was faith that enabled others to endure great uh, atrocities. There were, they were stretched out on the wheel and tortured. Listen, these are, these are men and, and women, right? They didn't deny their faith. Come on, we've never been tortured. I'm sorry, I don't think there's anybody in here that's ever been tortured because of your faith. You might face difficulties and you might face challenges, but I don't think anybody's been tortured. Amen. Amen. They were stretched out on, tor and on wheels and tortured, and they didn't deny their faith in order to be free because they longed for a more honorable and glorious resurrection. Others were mocked and experienced the most severe beating. Come on, have you ever been beaten? Has anybody ever taken you in the back and beaten you with the whip because you believed in Jesus? No. And if they could make it. Come on, church. I just, are we just little wimps? <laughs> no. We're not. We got to be the mighty army of God. Because, man, if they made it and they didn't deny God and they didn't deny their faith, man, they were stoned, sawed in two. I know that sounds like, ah, uh, that's just a fairy tale, a movie, Kathy. No. Come on. That's just, uh, uh, CSI or, you know, or what is that? Criminal Minds, right, Cam? That's just Criminal Minds, you know, where they're doing all these weird things to people. No, this is the Bible. 
Amen? Sawed in two, slaughtered? Come on. But they lived their life in faith and went about wearing goatskin and sheepskin, and they lost everything they possessed. They endured great afflictions. They endured. They endured. Come on, church. You could go on to read. True, you could go on. But they endured. We, we have to endure. You might, you're going to want to, oh, that's not it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're going to want to, uh, <laughs> you're going to want to quit. <laughs> there it is. You're going to want to quit. <laughs> but you're going to, you're going to need power. Right. And you're going to need boldness. Right. And you're going to need courage. <laughs> and, and you know what? And you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say, you're going to make it. Amen. Amen. You're going to make it. We're all going to make it. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Well, how do I get this power, Pastor Kathy? Well, the Holy Spirit gives you power. Amen. Invite him into your life. Invite him into your life. Praying in tongues gives you power. Amen? Yeah. Speaking in tongues gives you power. It, it approaches God. When you don't know what to pray, pray in the Spirit. Amen? Amen? Yeah. That gives you power. And with power will come boldness. And with boldness will come courage. Because we're going to make it, church. We are going to make it. We are going to be that church without spot and wrinkle. Amen. And we're going to be waiting for the trumpet. Yeah. Amen. For that glorious day. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just love you and we just praise you and we just thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your power. Thank you that that power lives in us. It's growing in us every day, not by our might, but by your might and your power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that that Holy Spirit will be our teacher and our guide and our, our deliverer. He'll be our, our counsel. He'll be our, he'll be our advocate. He'll be the one that will help us and lead us and guide us into all truth. And that truth will make us believers. And that truth will bring boldness into our lives. And that boldness will bring courage. Because we're going to make it through this life, Jesus. Serving you, honoring you, and worshiping you. And we just thank you for it. May your word penetrate into the very hearts and lives of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Once again, um, thank you, church. We love you. We appreciate you. Please join us. And I know there's a lot of good things out there. And thank you, uh, Brother Lewis and Brother Les, for all those kind words and our children's church for their beautiful song. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Go in his love and enjoy your day. And bless the food, Lord. Thank you that it's sanctified by your word and prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. You're an overcomer. You're an overcomer. I don't know what the enemy has placed upon you this morning or what you came in with, but I promise you that if you will pursue God and the goodness of God, he will overtake you with his goodness. Amen. Don't allow the enemy to lie to you, to tell you that it's over, you're done, you'll, you won't make it because God says you're the head and not the tail on top and not beneath. Hallelujah. You're an overcomer. You healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. He created you. He created you. He knows everything about you. Amen. So you just silence the enemy. How do we silence the enemy? By lifting our hands and by praising God. Let your attention be upon the word of God this morning. Because it is that word that is going to carry you through the storms of life. It is that word that is, going to be, that is going to empower you to be an overcomer so that you and I can receive the goodness of God in the land of the living. 
in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for every believer in the house this morning. I thank you, Lord God, that we purpose in our heart to be here both, both Father, not only physically, but physically, but mentally, spiritually, Lord, that we would draw from the anointing that is upon your word. As we receive that word this morning, Father, search our hearts, that that word would fall on good ground. If there's anything that we need to lay at the altar this morning, Father, we lay it at your feet. And we ask you, Lord, to wash us, cleanse us, purge us from all unrighteousness, anything that would hinder your word from being manifested in our lives. In Jesus' name. And if you're in agree with that, agreement with that, give the Lord praise this morning. Give the Lord praise this morning like you've never given Him before. Because when you praise God, you steal the avenger in your life. You're a winner. You're an overcomer. He said, pursue, overtake, and recover everything that the enemy has tried to steal from you. Don't allow him to take anything from you. Glory to God. You've got to get at it tenaciously. He, God wants you to be, he wants you to be gentle as dove, but he wants you to be bold as a lion. Devil, stop. I rebuke you, Satan. You have no authority in my life. I'm a child of God, born again, sanctified in the blood of God, of Jesus. Amen? You received that this morning? Well, turn to somebody and say, I'm glad you're here. You're going to leave change this morning. You're going to leave encouraged this morning, and you may have a seat. Glory to God. Such a presence of God in this house this morning. There is such a presence of God in this house this morning. Don't allow your mind to wander this morning. Don't look to the left, to the right, but keep your eyes on the prize, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And I tell you this morning, you continue to keep our pastor, Pastor Eric, in your prayers. Believe God for total restoration, healing in every area of his life, that he be made whole. W-H-O-L-E, nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken in Jesus' name. Amen? And I don't mean just throw some little da-da-da. I mean pray with fervent prayer. Amen? You believe God for that. Because I'm going to tell you what, Pastor Eric and Pastor Kathy pray that for you every day. They pray for this body every day. I would not be standing here today if it wasn't that kind of prayer that I sat under, under the ministry of HD Church. Amen. The Juarez family. Or how, Juarez, Juarez family. Amen. Today is, uh, we're, we're celebrating pastor appreciation. Amen. We love our pastors. Uh, to me, every day is a pastor appreciation day. I pray for them every day in my morning prayers. Amen. Lord, put them on my heart. I, I pray over them. I speak over them. I thank you, Lord. You increase your anointing and your presence in their lives. Amen. World changers in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Well, I have the privilege and the honor of receiving this morning's tithes and offerings. Amen. Amen. Don't get quiet on me now. <laughs> shout, with, shout like you just received a breakthrough. Shout like you just received the lottery. Glory to God. <laughs> you just won a million dollars in the lottery. Glory to God. Amen. So go with me to Proverbs. Our giving is in the condition of our heart. Amen. And this is a ministry of giving. This is a church full of believers that believe in giving. Glory to God. And God continues to pour out in their lives. You're blessed. Proverbs chapter 3. You see a lot of us around here in these vests today has been also uh, called Biker's Day. Glory to God. In Proverbs chapter 3, starting at verse 3, it says, Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Hmm. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablets of your heart. How many know an, an, uh, an angry man, an unforgiving man, a bitter man won't give? Amen. He says, and, and when you do this, you, and, so, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. You know, when you meet somebody whose heart's right, you can tell there's, there's something about them. Amen. You and I as believers, when we walk into a room, there's something about you. When you're, when, you're, when you're allowing the word of God to be fruitful in your life, when you're allowing the word of God to be present in your life, you can walk into a room and they can tell, hey, there's something different about them. There may be some cussing going on in the room, but when you walk in the room, things change. 
Amen. You give, give glory to God because you're a believer. Amen. He says, and so find favor and high esteem. It's not less, but it's God in me. Amen. In the sight of God, amen. It says, trust the Lord with all your heart. And this is the one that gets you. And lean not to your own understanding. You got to silence the enemy who tells you, no, don't, you know, no, don't do that. You got to silence him. And I don't mean silence him by standing there silent yourself. You got to open your mouth and speak. Amen. Amen. Faith comes by and hearing by the word of God. When Jesus, when God created, he said, let there be. Amen. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. Thank you, Lord, that I have a sound mind. Thank you, Lord, that I have more than enough. What's coming out of your mouth? Come on, this is a word church. This is a faith church. You don't speak it, you don't, you don't have it. Remember, your words are creating the atmosphere in which you live. They're forming your world. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to your flesh, strength to your bones. Amen. You're feeling pretty good right now. He says, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. And in doing this, so shall your barns be filled with plenty and your vats overflowing with new wine. Amen. Amen. He says in, in verse 11, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor de detest this correction. So when this time of the service comes, you get itchy, and don't despise that. That's just God convicting you of his goodness because he's given to you and he's given to me. And he continues to give to you every day when you wake up off your pillow and you take a breath of, of oxygen. <sighs> Thank you, Lord, for waking me up. It's the little things that create. Amen. So as the ushers minister to you, be a giver this morning. Honor the Lord with the first fruits. Honor the Lord with... I just love you, Lord, and I thank you, Father, that I woke up this morning. I thank you, Lord, that I have a job and better jobs. I thank you, Lord, there's increase in every area of my life, both financially, physically, mentally. I thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding, that guards my heart and my mind. Thank you, Lord. Are we good with that? Amen. Amen. So let's be a blessing. Amen. And as you have your offering ready, go ahead and bring it up, please. Worship God with your offering. Don't never just drop it. Never just drop it in the bucket. Worship God with it. Thank you, Lord, that I have seed to sow. Thank you, Lord, that you're increasing it. And there's also other ways of giving to Zelly, uh, a give. On the screen, it might be. Is that Zelly? <laughs> it's on my mind. <laughs> PayPal, you know, there's so many different things now. Our technology. It's amazing technology. I'm still learning technology. It's like I'm growing in the Lord every day. There's something new. Praise God, Chad. Remember, Chad was just two years old. He's a little bitty guy. Look at him. Man, him and Aiden and Nikki. Good Lord. And now I see uh, Reagan and Austin. I have a picture of them hugging buddies. <laughs> oh, my God. Lord, bless us with years so we can see them grow. We can just see our, our kids grow to our youth and then become worship leaders in the house of God. Amen. Don't we have an amazing worship team that usher us right into the presence of God? Glory to God. Let's pray. Stretch your hand out toward your seat. Father, I thank you this morning for every giver in the house. I thank you, Lord, that your word says that if we give, it'll come back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Your word says that we'll have favor with man and God, that you, Father, will give us increase in every area of our lives, both financially, physically, mentally, spiritually in every aspect lord if we just honor you with a cheerful heart so i thank you lord for every giver in the house i pray you continue to bless them lord bless their home we pray blessings over their homes over their finances over their families father god in jesus mighty name amen